Hey everyone, welcome to my special edition class in honor of my daughter who this year is turning six, but here are photos from her last party when she was five and yes, I really never got them scrapbooked. So I am going to grab this piece of 12 by 12 color collective. I love this paper. I'm going to go with the pink because my great um, first step in just in selecting colors is always to go off my photos. So I went with pink and this is the Distress Oxide lineup. So we have Picked Raspberry, Milled Lavender, Broken China, Seedless Preserves, Tattered Rose, and Spun Sugar. I picked my colors based off the colors of my photos, which is a fun little helpful hack. I highly recommend it because sometimes it is just so difficult knowing where to start. So that is how I chose my color palette. I went off my main photo and pulled colors from there. So these are the stamp sets I'm going to use that I pulled from my collection that I found would be great for a birthday page. So this birthday cake one was a previous stamp society. The number sets, both the solid and the outline are still available in the shop. This is a four by six birthday set that was in the shop. And this was the Happy Birthday Stamp Society set. Then, of course, you know my love for these solid and outline elf, um, alphas, sorry, numbers. And then I pulled out this May agenda because I wanted to use the five since it was her fifth birthday. So lots of ways we can use those stamp sets. So to begin, I'm going to start with always my focal point and kind of one of my larger stamps. I find that's how I always begin my pages is using a bold, big stamp and then building my layers kind of around it. So I am applying the seedless preserves and I'm going to place my five in the lower right hand corner because I think I'm going to put my photos more on the left side. So I'm gonna give that a nice little press and there you go. Next up, I'm gonna grab my outline with some black because I always love some black um, contrast on my pages. It seems to be a habit of mine. So you will always seem to find some black when I am stamping. So we're gonna give that a nice little outline and we have it. I thought this set would be fun to kind of do a, not a countdown, but I guess a count up. So because I started with the five as my main focus, I'm going to go five, four, three, two, one with the smaller stamps. I really adore the mixed font. I think it's fun and playful and perfect for a birthday page. So I am just still sticking with my same color. You could also play with color tones and essentially do a gradient effect as well, which I thought would be neat. So you could start doing your number one with a lighter color and then move your way up to the dark. But I just kept them all the same, but that's a fun little tip. So I didn't initially have this set in my um, starting collection, but you can't go wrong with a burst. I love this set, so I'm just going to add some bursts around the five because I want to, again, bring my focus and attention to the five since it is or was her fifth birthday. Easy peasy. Very good. So my um, inspiration again is a balloon background for this birthday page. So I'm going to kind of composition my photos where I want them. I'm then going to take my ruler and pencil just to make a soft little mark at the top to know where I kind of want the focus of my balloons to be since I don't want my photos covering them all. Um, it's just a helpful guide. So this is the milled lavender shade, I believe. And I'm going to start with the lighter balloons first and then add my darker ones on the top. I am loving the effect this color has on this specific page because it's subtle and almost looks like the balloons are transparent. So I'm going to just randomly stamp them. And when I say randomly, I honestly, do not have a plan when I stamp. And I think that is the most liberating um, mindset to have when you're stamping is to just go for it. I am just kind of placing them where I want and again, building 
the rest of my stamping around them. So now I have, I believe this is the pink, um, is it picked raspberry? I can't remember. And I am just going to now add some brighter pinks in and around to continue to build my set. Then I'm grabbing the purple. It's actually, a, it's not really a purple, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's a really nice shade. I'm not a purple girl, but I'm loving it. And again, with the hearts, I know there is a coveted balloon on the March agenda set, so I'm going to just snitch that in there. And I'm going to add some of the broken china because there is blue in my daughter's photos and I thought it would be a great color to accent with and just pull some blue into the mix. I probably would have been okay leaving the blue out to be honest, but I kind of like the contrast and the pop, so. And now I am just adding some more on top spun sugar. I love the transparent look these lighter colors give. And then I'm going to take the ribbon balloon, ribbons of the balloons and start just stamping them randomly. Again, no plan here. I'm gonna switch out and use the other ribbon that comes in that set for a little bit of a variation. I am keeping the color the same. And again, just building onto the collage, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So there you go. Just honestly going for it. Now I'm going to add in the smaller details. So once I have my basic image done, that's when you can have fun with all the little pieces that come in the sets that are those little buildable details. So here I am adding some balloon confetti, um, just keeping with the blue tone on tone and adding it in and also into the clear balloons. It's so fun and I am giving a little bit of echo stamping in there to add a gradient kind of effect. Now I am going to take the streamer stamp and I'm going to string it across the page. Um, I know my photos will cover up some of it, but that's okay. And again, echo stamping to give a transparent tone on tone look to add a little bit of contrast so it's not the same. And then I have this beaded garland, so I'm going to add that in as well. So that can kind of accent and complement the richer streamers. And again, just a little bit of visual interest and layers for a fun effect. Here I'm gonna grab that five I told you that I was gonna use from the agenda. I really love that little detail. So I outlined in black first, and now I'm going to take the solid numerals that fit into these agenda numbers and I'm going to kind of do a two-tone fill. So you can see at the top, I put the brighter pink, which is the worn lipstick, I believe, or is it picked raspberry? Again, sorry, can't remember. I have to go back and look at what I used. And again, I am just kind of blending them, kind of going back and forth. For me, with my ink pads, I'm pretty much okay if some of the colors get mixed in. I, um, I'm kind of not a messy crafter, but I'm not a particular crafter and I'm okay with that. So if any of you are worried about the um, cleanliness of your pad, it's usually just personal preference. And there you can see kind of the soft gradient effect that that achieved. Now I'm gonna take this Cake Stamp Society set. This was a previous set from the year. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail now that I have the basis of my background done. So I'm going to stamp the cake plate and the cupcake and some other little details. Sometimes this is my own little hack, but if I do a color that to me doesn't initially stand out enough for me, I will always stamp black over top. It kind of gives a fun shadow effect and then also just adds a bit of contrast and sometimes fixes up a little oopsie if I have stamped something I don't like. So that's kind of my little, I wouldn't say hack, but just a little personal trick that I do. So if you see a lot of black on my stuff, you'll know either I wanted to just pop it a little bit more or I possibly made a mistake. So I'm just gonna add that in. Again, I don't think it pops out enough, so I'm just going to add some black over top, just like that. Very easy and effective, and it really turns out um, quite nice. So I always love these little detailed stamps to add some 
completion to a certain look. So I'm gonna take this little burst, which actually is meant for the candles, but I love how it just kind of brings a page alive and adds a little bit of sparkle and personality. So I'm just gonna kind of put those around the balloons. These type of details are always personal preference, but I just kind of love to add a little bit more layers and visual detail. So that's what I love to do. So here you can see, I was going to attempt to write happy, or sorry, stamp happy birthday. And I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do, but I made the first happy, so I just decided, okay, let's just follow through with this and see where it goes. And you'll see, well, I don't like it. Ugh, I was so mad, but never fail. There is always a way to work with a stamping mistake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, again, take this Happy Birthday Stamp Society set. I'm going to put this Happy Birthday bold text across. I didn't really ink my black as much as I wanted. So again, to cover that up, I just added it into my seedless preserves and did a layered stamp, which I actually loved. I really love stamping on stamping and it adds a muted, soft, um, kind of blended look, which I am completely okay with and very happy. So to fix my mistake, what I'm doing, grabbed a scrap piece of Color Collective, I am going to take the cupcake that I initially stamped on my page and now cut it out, fussy cut it, so that I can pop it with a little bit of pop dot adhesive. Great tip, use your stamping pad to add some edging to make it more of a cohesive, less white edge. And I'm going to just add that on top so that it gives it some contrast and pops. I love it, love, love, love. I'm honestly not a fan of fussy cutting myself, but sometimes the projects just really work with a little bit of fussy cut imaging and stamps are great for this. And again, I love making my own little embellishments. Again, I am just taking those edges to kind of complete them, another pop dot, and there we go. So to complete that little boo-boo error that I made with the happy birthday stamping, I am going to create two little stamped presents from that set, so I am just adding all the pieces together. Then I'm going to cut out as best I can and then ink the edges like I did in the previous example and then I'm going to layer another present. This time I'm going to pull some blue from the balloons just to give a little bit of a pop and add it there. And I also did the same with these heart balloons. So such a fun way to kind of add some dimension and easy peasy again. So now time to adhere my photos. I am happy with my stamp collage. I'm going to lay that photo. Initially, I was going to use three photos on this page, but instead I'm going to stick with two and I'm going to just kind of align that so that one of the balloons is kind of overlapping and now laying flat one of my gifts and then using a pop dot for the other. Very, very fun. I am grabbing this pink, um, Color Collective Edge, I believe this is Bubblegum, the Bubblegum set, and I'm going to add that pink corner to my larger photo in the one side just to add a little bit of color and completion. And last up, as what I usually like to do with my stamped backgrounds, is look for any spots that I feel could use a little bit more of a detail and then add in some last minute images. So this is the confetti from the cake set and I am just using the seedless preserves to echo stamp and kind of fill in some edges and give some razzle dazzle as you could call it to my balloon bouquet because that is kind of the part that is telling the story of these photos and is the main focus. So I really want to bring that look together so you can see how fun that confetti looks. And I always love adding in some text. So I just use some black ink for that top text. 
Then I had an afterthought to add in five candles. So I am taking the candles, stamped them in black and sugar high at the bottom in the seedless preserves as my final stamp. So you can see how that all has come together. So here's the final look. Here is a close up of the look. You can get an idea and feel of how I layered the balloons with the streamers, with the text, with the numbers, with the ink, and of course those fun details being the confetti, the little mini bursts. Um, you can see as I tilt the camera view, the dimension that we added on by stamping and fussy cutting additional images. I love how I laid the purple heart balloons slightly offset from the original stamped image to give a little shadow. So that's always a fun way that you can use um, fussy cut stamping to kind of just add a little bit of additional personality on the page. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this free class in honor of my daughter's birthday. And thank you for being here. I love to share what's in my heart.